Hello, welcome to all our guests joining us today. My name is Reed Foster, and I'm the Military Capabilities Analyst. It's, as always, my great pleasure to welcome you to this online intelligence briefing. Today, I'm presenting with Mr. Sean O'Connor, who's our Principal Imagery Analyst here at Jane's. And our session here is entitled uh, Iranian Air Defenses, Examining Current and Future Capabilities in an Age of Growing Uncertainty. Well, this particular uh, briefing program is uh, part of a series of 40 events uh, throughout this 2017 year and is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and Module Products, and that includes our market forecast products. So before I begin, I uh, did want to highlight the fact that the information from today's presentation been drawn from a variety of, of across the James content, but principally is coming from the James Military and Security Assessments Intelligence Center and principally from our James Satellite Imagery Analysis Center. Um, just to sort of set the stage as we move on here, I mean, uh, we're, we're entering into a period of time where Iran has received new weapon systems from Russia, possesses a number of legacy systems over the years, but it's sometimes hard to discern the Iranian rhetoric as far as the robustness of its air defenses versus the, the actuality of that on the ground. So hopefully some of what we look to do today is to try to separate some of that rhetoric from what we know that's been employed to what degrees and how capable these systems are. And uh, just as a sort of to set the stage, the background of, of how Iran got to where it is uh, today. Some of the significant imported systems going from about the pre-revolution era to last year. We begin with the Hawk system, uh, a very widely available air defense system uh, that was proliferated amongst U.S. allies throughout the 1970s, 1980s, and up until the 1990s, really. The original units were delivered in 1972, and uh, lesser reported supplemented by Israeli systems during the Iran-Iraq war from about 1981 to 1986. So these were slightly improved uh, Hawks from the uh, original versions they received in 1972, but those was an effort to bolster uh, the Iranian air defenses with systems they were already familiar with and could be integrated more rapidly into the defense force structure. Significantly locally developed systems mostly fall into categories that are improvements upon systems that they had received from other countries. We'll look at the Mursad, the Talash, the Rod, and the Bavar 373. And all of these systems are under what's called the IRIADF, which is the Islamic Republic of Iran Iranian Air Defense uh, Network that is regionally oriented around Iran. Uh, each has a different sector assigned to it. This has been in development for, for quite some time. We've seen evidence and photos of, of this system, which for the eagle eye of Manu, uh, you, can, you can probably tell the similarities between the uh, Russian Buk system and the rod here. What you see in the photos down below are two separate Telar, which uh, reportedly, when they unveiled these, had two separate radar uh, systems attached to them, which is unique. Uh, typically, obviously, you would depend on a single system functionality instead of trying to blend two different systems, but there hasn't been very much information parsed out about these vehicles uh, and these engagement systems. We're thinking that it, based off of, you know, similar to the book, if it makes it too uh, its debut. It's, it's likely to have a, around a 50-kilometer uh, engagement range. Uh, I'll uh, hand over very briefly, which is, is basically going to dovetail to some of the capabilities that the F-300 has brought from Mr. Sean O'Connor, our principal imagery analyst. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the current developments. We'll look at some of the capabilities and limitations of a lot of the Iranian air defense systems. We're going to look at how these systems are deployed throughout Iran, and then we'll go through in pretty a pretty good amount of detail, the S-300 PMU-2 deployment, and show you some imagery of the deployment as well as some of their training exercises they've conducted at Semnon, which is their primary SAM training range in central Iran, close to one of their space launch facilities. So the Hawk, the 2K-12 Quadrat, and the Tor M1E are all designed to be tactical SAM systems. So the intention for these systems is, by design, to follow around armored units predominantly and to defend them from helicopters and tactical aircraft on the battlefield. And that confers them a high degree of mobility and the ability to rapidly redeploy wherever they should be needed, given that they're supposed to be following around units that are going to be on maneuver. What Iran has done, and what we see a lot of countries do that use some of these systems, when they don't have a lot of money to purchase large numbers of true strategic SAM systems, they deploy these systems in a strategic capacity to allow them to defend key locations from semi-permanent launch facilities. And what that's allowing them to do, again, is to use maybe cheaper options 
to provide layered defense of some of their key facilities without having to go through the expense of procuring large amounts of strategic SAM systems. We've identified at least 41 currently active SAM sites in Iran with another 43 non-operational. Many of those non-operational SAM sites are upkept and they would be able to be reoccupied by various systems should the need arise, or current systems could relocate there as well. So the next couple of slides will look at where these systems are located. This slide shows you the deployment and the 40 kilometer range rings of these Hawk missile batteries. You can see a lot of them are consolidated around Tehran. There's a couple that have been consolidated around either Iraq or Esfahan to defend both military installations and nuclear infrastructure. You can see a couple scattered down there in the Gulf, as well as on some of the islands that Iran holds within the Persian Gulf itself. And you can see a picture over there of one of the Iranian tells launching a 48N6E2 missile at Semnon. There's a bunch of imagery that was released after they conducted the firing exercise. The 30N6E2 target engagement radar provides them with their first legitimate multi-target engagement capability SAM system, with each radar system being able to engage six targets at once with the gu guiding up to two missiles per target, which is basically standard doctrine. This is that original S-300 PME-2 site that was set up east of Tehran. This was used to be a training site for the S-200. And if you look over where the battle management radar is on the left side of the image at the southern end of the complex, that area is where they used to have two of the launch rails for the S-200, and then up on the northern end of the complex, they used to have one of the engagement radars. All those components have now largely been removed. This is where that fourth battery ended up deploying. You can see here it's the 28th March of this year, and now you can see this is actually on the grounds of uh, Tehran Meribad International Airport. And you can see, again, four launch vehicles, one engagement radar, and now since it's after the February firing exercises at Semnon, it's now received one of those 96L60 radars. Some of their weaknesses include an over-reliance on aging technology. When Iran is developing something like the Mursad system, which is the upgraded, improved Iranian production version of the Hawk missile system, they're basically taking the Hawk and taking all of its known weaknesses and propagating it into a new system. We're talking about threat scenarios, and we've obviously seen the, the spread of air defense uh, from a technical point of view and, and some of the engagement range capabilities of these systems, uh, especially when they're uh, used together. But, you know, who is Iran principally defending against, you know? And that's, that's a story that's oscillated over time. You know, pr primarily, originally, it was against potential Israeli strikes uh, supported by U.S. action or could be uh, unilateral U.S. or Israeli strike. And that's that's sort of been the case for the last 20 or so years. But increasingly, as the, the Gulf has become a bit more complex from a security standpoint, the rivalry with Saudi Arabia has, has brought to the fore the potential for uh, military conflict, uh, obviously, between Gulf states and Iran. We do have, you know, a more robust Iranian industry, but uh, at the present time, the systems are still relatively limited compared to uh, the capabilities of other systems in other countries, and especially when that comes to tracking and engaging multiple targets. As, as we mentioned, the S-300 is the only system that has the ability to engage a wide range of targets simultaneously. Other systems uh, are more built, uh, limited, and, and that would make it more susceptible to a number of uh, attack aircraft or, or systems and trying to track those down. That Our next intelligence briefing is occurring uh, next Thursday, the 13th of July. Uh, and that's looking at instability and arms competition in South Asia. That's going to happen at 1500 UK time and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So once again, thank you for joining us for, for the session. We hope it's been informative. And uh, until the next time, take care. Thank you.